Hey there folks, JD here, and welcome back to this week's Minecraft videos. So today what we're going to do, we are going to be going across the white and silver line, we're going to be going through the great mine, we're going to be going through the smaller great mine, and then we're going to be going eventually to this biodome right here, right in the very distance there, you can see it just shining. So don't forget, if you just want to see a particular aspect of this particular video, then just check out the chapters and you will have everything that you could possibly need out of this video there. So let's get on with it. So I'm going to just quickly jump up here and I'm going to take us into my bunker. Down and around. Eventually, there you go. Being careful not to get caught into that campfire. And then... Um, no, a lot of it's underground, so I'm not going to go to sleep. I was going to go to sleep until the day, but there is really no need, excuse me. There really is no need at this particular point because all of it is going to be underground until we get to the biodome. And personally, I think the biodome looks better at night. Okay, so we're just jumping on the orange rail to take us through the cross rail, which is our destination here. So let's look at where we're headed. So we are heading now to the white line and to silver line. So what we need to do is we need to go back up the orange line until we get to a ladder that says white line and silver line. So let's go for it. And apologies if you can hear an ice cream van outside. It's not an ice cream van in Minecraft and I really would quite like an ice cream now. I'm going to have to um, not get an ice cream <laughs> at this minute, but I might have to get some Ben and Jerry's not sponsored by them. A little bit later on so there we go let's stop there and where we want to go is the white line and the silver line now you would have seen a few days back in the overview I would have taken you through to the great mine uh, but today we're going to look at it in a little bit more detail and I can hear a zombie shouting he might be behind that wall so first of all let's go to the great mine and the white loop line now I say it's a loop, it's not a loop anymore because I broke the loop on purpose. But I'll get to that shortly. Now, in the overview I would have walked past this door and said I'm not going to take you in it until it's finished. What I... Oh, an enderman has been in here as well. Leaving blocks everywhere. He's, he's getting his way through my island to tell you. What I am going to be doing eventually is... I don't think... Come on. Come on. Come on, there we go. I want to be expanding on this here. So this is a huge waterfall that I, 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 I accidentally broke into. And what I've been doing is I want to make something up and around here. Um, a bit more of a railway, uh, but I want to make a, a giant terminal for every single railway track to um, kind of terminate here. Whether or not I do it, I don't know. I do quite like the idea that this is so big and the expanse, you know, such a big an expanse. There's another one of my railways there. That's one we're going to be going on shortly. That's the silver line. And I don't really know what to do with it, but I really like this. I think I'm going to make a big terminal, perhaps... I might just have a couple of automated trains going up and down the line, just adding a bit of that spooky sound. Because if you hear a train without any, anybody on it, and if you're the only one in this single-player game, as I am, you know there's nobody else in the game with you. It does add a real little spook factor. So that's what I'm hoping to do with this. I might just uh, go further down, and I might just bring this into... Uh, into my into my great mine. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but I have got a lot to do in this area. I've started adding in, as I do with all my tunnels and all my my um, my tunnels that I make. I add in different bricks, different blocks of different colour and different make, just so that it you, it looks a bit more realistic, doesn't it? it? Looks a bit more authentic, I think. If you're going to burrow into it into a uh, into a rock into a mountain, it's not all going to be the same colour. And this is or, or the same rock. And this is what I'm trying to denote here, just with the granite and with the uh, diorite and with the cobblestone and with the gravel and with the actual stone. So that's my plan for that anyway. I might, um, I want to really 
really work at that. In behind here, I've got the start of another line. This is going to be a line that hopefully connects with a line above ground. And therefore I can get from point A to point B easier rather than coming into cross rail and then going down the ladder and then finding my way down here. So I'm trying to experiment. I'm trying to line up exactly where I need to where I need to mine to get to that um, that above ground line. Down here I've got the start of another line <laughs> that I'm making. Um, I've got lines everywhere here. And I'm gonna try and see if I can get that one to come back on itself as a big loop. Uh, again, we saw this in the overview. I've got another mine up there, but it's normally full of mobs, so I, I'm not going to open that up. But likewise, this is where we just were with the giant waterfall. If I'd have kept going up, we would have got to here. So again, it all connects in one sort of weird way. Now, if you haven't seen the overview, welcome to my great mine. This I call it the great mine because it reminds me a little bit of Harry Potter's um, grand, uh, the great hall in Hogwarts with all the candles floating about and okay they're not floating but still so as with all my railways we're going to go down one way and you're going to see a certain amount of things and when I come back up you're going to see even more that you didn't see on your way down so I'm going to jump out about here whereas before we just went round on the whole track we will go around I will uh, we will go back around it but for now I just want to give you a guided tour of everything here so what I've done here is I've made different lines up. The whole point of it is, is I was, and I'm still thinking of doing it, of trying to make um, different train tracks. The problem is, everywhere I go, as I'm sure you can see down here, I keep on getting coming up against lava. So I'm going to try and see if I can get around that and try and make the tracks bend around the lava so that your you're driving in and or riding the rails rather in and amongst all this lava because you can see there's one there there's one there and there's one there that I've, I've boarded up so I might that's going to take a lot of doing and a lot of thinking but that's my idea to have again once I do it I'll make a video on it all the the the, the railways going around the the main lava field there so got a train track above that goes to the station we'll be riding that shortly if we keep on going, then you'll see there's redstone. I have no shortage of that whatsoever. But likewise, this whole mine really is responsible for everything that you see built above ground. If it wasn't for this mine and this mine alone, then I wouldn't have had all my railways. I wouldn't have had anything from a, a, a rock or from a mineral perspective because it's all been mined down here. And you can see, if you keep an, a weather eye open, how much coal, how much... Uh, redstone i've got there we are i've got iron i've got it all here and it heads i don't know how well you can see but right down the bottom you can see a bit of orange that's lava so i'm trying to sort of come up with a way of making a really long railroad inside this uh, this great mine but every time I, I take a turning there's lava so i'm just trying out a lot of different things really at this particular time more coal more coal which means that probably there's more iron by that coal as well, because they normally come in twos. Have I got anything up there? No. And then we're just going to head back. There's plenty more of these little tunnels to see. So let me just do a bit of a run, just to get down here a bit, bit quicker. Again, more redstone up here. Loads and loads and loads of minerals. But it's, it's huge. Everywhere, there we are, more redstone. Everywhere that I I build, whichever direction I go in, I often find that I come across some crazy, crazy things down here. Loads and loads of crazy. Normally, there's a massive chunk of slime hopping around here. He's gigantic. And I kill him every time and get all the slime balls from it. But he keeps on reappearing. And I don't know from where, but I quite like it. Down here is where I get a lot of my uh, my cobbled uh, deep slate from because, um, yeah, because uh, I use that, as, you sh as you've seen above, I polish it up and put it into bricks. And also, now and again, you see a bit of gold that's in and amongst all this, so it's a good place to, uh, it's a good rock to have. I prefer that to actual cobblestone. Looks a bit nicer. So again, coming round, loads of gravel. 
I haven't altered any of these blocks, by the way. These are all sort of natural formations within the game. Down here, I've got a little water, water feature, I think, if I've come to the right place. No. <laughs> it's around here somewhere. There it is. <laughs> and this is where I had loads of diamonds in here. So I just mined a load, load of diamonds. I think I got them all. Yeah. So now I'm just going in, again, different directions to see what... Oh, look at that. To see what um, pops up. Good. I'm getting a load of iron. Which is perfect. It's exactly what I need. Because I've used all the iron, as I'm sure you, you can appreciate, on all of the railways that I have around here. And again, down here, load of stuff. Just mine, mine, mine all the time. Back at the top. And again, you can see this is where the railway links around. There's nothing in there other than sort of like little little mob pits that I've created to try and grab some mobs as they as they spawn. So that's the main part. If we jump back in my cart and head off, uh, I'm eventually going to have this railroad is going to be the only thing and uh, at this level. See more redstone there? I've got more redstone over here, more redstone there. I'm trying to, um, yeah, make all this the same level and I'm going to lower the floor as I am doing here. So I'm going to mine all this away, lower the floor totally so that this train track is the only thing that is really high. And that my my finished, well, I don't even know if I'm ever going to finish with this mine, but if essentially what I'm hoping is when I'm finished with it, I will, um, I'll just have probably... 10 or 20 block height will be this railway and everything else will be sunk below it. Now just to give you an idea, I'm at layer 4 currently now. And this mine goes deeper. It goes very, very deep. I haven't taken you to the deepest part of it yet. So let's zoom around. More lava fields. Closed off bit of track over there. That was another railway. That's all my cooking implements. Another closed off bit of rail behind there. That got blown up by a creeper, incidentally. Um, I made a little mob pit, didn't realise it wasn't it wasn't deep enough. And uh, two creepers blew up as I was running above ground and blew up my railroad. So I thought, well, I'm going to put that behind some glass. So I, I raised up the outside. When we go outside, you might see in one video, you might see like a, a, a chimney sticking out the floor. That, that's what that is. <laughs> I got some mob holes here as well. Nothing down there? No. Um, and then I'm not going to take you right the way through because this takes best part of eight minutes to get through. This is the smaller greater mine. It's quite a walk. I'm just going to go to the end and just show you it. So again, coming across lava. And again, it's just winding itself around. Until, there you go. It keeps on going, it keeps on going. And it goes around that lava and keeps on going straight again. So it, ne it it literally, when I said it's quite a walk, it's to remind me that it is, it's about eight minutes real time to get to the end. It's insane. And there's nothing there. <laughs> That's the thing. It's not as if you get there and I've made this huge ornate complex. No, it's just a brick wall. So <laughs> it's not even worth you going really. And then back. So now we can see the great mine and all the areas from an, another aspect. Everything we missed coming up, we're now seeing on the way back. And I like going back because this bit is a bit slower. It's not as fast as when you came uh, came down the line. Going back up the line is a bit slower. And I like that because the, the mine really opens up to you and you can see everything. So again, closed off part of the mine. And here's the part the creeper blew up behind that glass there. That was a good line as well, that was. I really liked that one. It was snaking round, twisty, turny. It had a couple of points that you could you could switch. It was quite interactive. And the, the line you saw back there, behind the four cubes, that isn't complete. Nowhere near it. Now, this is what I meant when the mine opens itself out to you. Oh, look, there's my slime. My slime is back. My slime is back. There he is. Come on, bud. I do like having him here. I, I, I really should find out how we how he's spawning and stop him. Where the hell is he? Yeah, 
Hey, there he is. Right, he's heading down there. Right, I'll jump back on the train. <laughs> I think I've made three videos in this in this Minecraft. Um, no, two videos in this Minecraft um, week compendium, and I've said, "Oh, there's there's slime," and I've <laughs> it's never it's never appeared. I'm so glad he has. There he is. Hey, buddy. Sorry, I'm gonna have to kill you. Sorry, guys. I like him. He's quite sweet. So there we go. There is the great mine from another angle. Before I jump back in my cart and we scoot off. Back up to see things that you haven't probably seen. More redstone there. There's just so much redstone. I've left it there on purpose just to remind me where it is. So if I ever run out of it, which I very much doubt, I think currently in all my chests around the place, I've got about 3,000 um, um, 3, uh, powders or whatever. Three, it's not blocks, is it? What is it? 3,000 of these. Redstone dust. 3,000 redstone dust. That's what I've got. So I don't need it. So we're going to go back up to the top. And then I'm going to use the blast furnace, and then I'm going to take you down into the deep part of the mine. Lava field. An old station. That's where it used to loop around. When I, I said I used to call, I called this a loop. When it did loop around, it reconnected there. Until I decided I would break the loop and stop it back at the, the, at the terminal over here. So I've got to change this. Railway loop. Yeah, it's not a loop anymore. So down we come. I'm going to the iron ore. I haven't got a lot of it. That we just mined. Oh, six, I mined 16 from here. Wow. I'm just going to put it in the blast furnace. And then I'm going to take you down the deepest part of the mine. Which is all deep slate. And this is a great place. Because I found a lot of gold down here. When I get to the bottom bit, I'll show you how deep it is. I'll bring up the uh, the layer. Some gravel, some new places down here. Oh, actually, I've got to put a few torches here. I ran out the last time. I think I put a lantern here, didn't I? Yeah. Sod that. I'm not leaving a lantern down there. Too much iron ore for a lantern. And not to just be put in a mine. Yeah, good. Picked it up. There we go. Just so I can carry on afterwards. I spend a few hours a day um, mining. Just getting enough iron ore and getting enough stuff that I can progress with. Put that there. It's a bit, yeah, it's a bit better. Let's put that there. Put that there. It might be bright enough anyway. I mean, it it, pro, it, it is, because otherwise things would have spawned there, but still. And now we're at the deepest part of the mine, which is minus 38. And you can see I've got water above, because it was dripping through the blocks here. So I'm going to make all this. It's going to eventually be glass. So you can see all the water above. But then what I've done is I've opened out. I've opened out all this here. Still at, what are we at now? 39 now. So we've, we've gone down a block further. And the whole idea is just to mine and see what I find really. Um, so far it's been a lot of um, deep slate. Which is absolutely fine because I love using that brick. Uh, it's been a bit of gold as well. Found a bit of gold here. I'm a bit too deep now, I think. I think it's minus 16 to block 60. I think gold is, gold is if I remember correctly. But still, you know, if I don't find anything else here other than getting these cobbled, uh, cobbled um, deep slate uh, bricks, deep slate rocks rather, God, I can't speak, then um, it's been worth it because I do use them a lot in my build. So I don't think I've got enough energy as I haven't got enough food to run. So let's walk this one back. So that's it. So that's minus 39 on the block layer, which isn't bad. Isn't bad. It's quite it's quite deep. It's quite far. Uh, but more than anything, I think it's it really does open up because I've, I've used a lot of the, the deep slate from the top and I was running out of it and I was getting concerned. Where do I get it from? And then I noticed where I started digging this entrance to come down here, there was a huge um, a huge element of this. So I just carried on digging. And that eventually got me to um, 
where I am now. You may be wondering why some of these stairs are on the wrong way. I have seen, I might be wrong, but I have seen in one other part of my mind that mobs can't get up it. So if anything does decide to, um, does decide to uh, materialise, it won't be able to get up there, in theory. In theory. Right, no more slime. No more slime. Well, I'm chuffed I managed to get him on video. No. So then I'll go back, collect my iron from here and then open up this chest and put him in it. 16 bricks, because I'm running really low. My Oh, I haven't got any. My iron is there. Got diamond, gold, slime, lots of slime. Um, I'll put that down there. I've got some more pumpkins. I'll take that with us because we're going now to see the biodome and I want to plant more pumpkins. Have I got anything else here? No. Okay. And uh, there's the part of the railway that you saw earlier. Just wood, blocks. Again, things I might need. Tools. So, let's leave this line, the white line. And let's go across the silver line. And go to the biocube. It's soon to be biocubes. Because I, I am building another one. But of course, I have to work by the day. Don't know if you saw it when we came down, but glass ceiling. Nice amount of water. So as you come out of that mine, first thing you see is this silver line that way. So now we're on silver line. Oh, it's raining. That'll look great in the biodome. So here we go. So we're going to head to another station first, a small station. Then I'm going to flip the line, change the points. And then we are going to continue to go to the bio cube, bio cube. I do keep on calling it a bio dome. Apologies, it's not a dome, it's a cube. Right, so here's the little station. It's nothing much. And that's the whole purpose of it. It's just as a connection point. Switch the points across the glass bridge. We, oh, somebody's knocked out all my torches over there. Interesting. And here we have it, the bio cube. So the whole point's a bit bioshocky. Wanted it to be a little bit vintagey, a little bit nice, horticultural, botanical. Um, I've opened. You can't see it very well, but you might. If you look around about here, you might see some rain fall in, because I've smashed holes into here so that the the, the trees will still get a bit of rain, and I've done it this side too. Bamboo growing, little pumpkin patch behind here, added a little train station, more bamboo growing here. I got some jungle leaves from my jungle, um, my jungle biome from my lava line, added some little flowers, some poppies, some marigolds and some blue flowers, <laughs> some more jungle. Then I've, I've, um, Smash some holes in the uh, roof so that the bamboo can grow out of it, which really does because it loves to grow high. So I've just allowed it to do that. I think it's quite nice because otherwise it was all this size. See, I'm not going to smash that one. I'm going to leave that one as it is. Or am I? No, I'm going to smash. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm going to smash it. There we go. You can get out of there now, buddy. And then if you come over here, I've got some nice melons. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I know. Sorry, child. Um, so back down here I'm now going to put in some pumpkins but I'm going to put them under the trees a couple of pumpkins here there and everywhere there we go so as as I said before when you come up here you don't see them but when you go back you see them perfect and I'm building another one over here now let me tell you a little bit about the construction the construction of this was quite difficult because I was having to do it by day alone so what I've done is I've made I've just raised the ground up Use dirt because it was a bit more natural. And then what I've done is behind the dirt, I've got layers of stone, layers of cobblestone and layers of deep slate rock. Uh, deep slate bricks, sorry, deep slate bricks uh, behind there as well. And it goes about three bricks outwards and it comes up. Well, I can show you how far it comes up because you can see it. 
from the bamboo place and it comes up that high there in fact this is a great a great thing to show you because this is the layout the whole way around so you can see i've got my deep slate i've got some cobblestone i've got some deep slate bricks and i've got on the other side of this i've got some stone as well uh, and it goes up that high and it maintains that height right the way around the whole of the biodome so if a creeper was to come in and was to explode then yes it is going to damage it but it's not going to damage it too much unlike dirt where creepers will blow up huge amounts of dirt the stone they won't be able to blow up that much so yes you're going to lose about four or five four or five bricks but it's a little bit better than losing 16 or 17 bricks of dirt and then having a great big gaping hole out of, of what you're building so I'm building the next biodome just outside here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you outside. I might have to sleep until it's daylight, but then I will take you outside to show you the ground, the, the foundations I'm putting down for this next biodome, bio cube. See, they've left all my torches, but they've knocked out all my torches up there. Oh, that's, that's quite crazy. A bit creepy. Right, switch the points, head back, and then hopefully it'll start getting light. If it's not light, then as I say, I'll sleep in the bed of room upstairs, and then um, we can go outside and I'll show you where I'm building the second bio cube because I have started. Unlike in the overview where I hadn't started, I have at the time you're watching this. I love doing that, getting off on the station before the train reaches its, uh, its destination. There we are. And then back up again. I'm going to remodel all of this, probably into black, into a deep, deep slate brick. But you'll see all that in upcoming updates, anyway. So it's still raining. So night or day, night. So let's have a bit of a, a bit of a kip. Here we go. Now, respawn point has changed because the last time I slept, I believe, was in my treehouse. And there's still areas I haven't taken you to. Just looking at the main, the main areas here. So outside we go. Sun's coming up. Should we watch everything burn? Ah, look at that. Oh, skeleton's fallen in my mob trap again. He's, well, look at that. He's not having a great time. There's a creeper there. Bamboo has grown really high on that uh, lava line. Look at that. Incredible. I can't wait to show you this. I'm so excited about that. Look how high everything is there. And these jungle trees I've planted haven't grown much. They're gigantic in my jungle um, my jungle biome. I can't I bring them over here. Look at them. They're tiny. I thought they were really going to tower over this. I thought it was going to be huge. But not so much. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is come over here. No, I'm not because I haven't finished that. I'm going to drop down over here and then we're going to have a little look. Creeper's gone. You're going to burn in there, skeleton. So down I go. And then over we go to the biodome. So I can't run, unfortunately, because I don't have any, any energy. Oh, there's a creeper there. I'm going to have to fight them with my sword. Only three hits and they, they go away. Now you can see the, the biodome that we were just in. And you can see the foundations I put down for the next biodome. So what I'll do is I'll take you around the original. And I will show you everything that I have added to it. All the, all the bricks and how I've made up the layers. I had a door in there, see? <laughs> I just cobbled up the door. So what I've done here, this side I haven't changed. So if I come this side, this bit here, this is basically a mob pit where anything that, sit, that, that, that gets in there gets trapped. But as you can see, I've used a lot of very hardy rocks here. Stone, then deep slate, deep slate bricks. And it's like that, I think, all the way around. I've jutted this little bit out here on purpose 
that's where a lot of them come from in there that's where I've seen people come from and then around here again adding some stone around the bottom changing the stone for um, deep slate it is deep why do I always say yeah deep slate I always think that's wrong it's not wrong and then this is the new one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch a hole here and I'm going to join this make a little tunnel and then join these two together and this is the new one so what I've done is I've built up the earth around here as much as I can in a load of these weird and wonderful locations to give this sort of tiered approach rather than the first one which is really flat this other one I want to be not mountainous but a little bit hilly you know so when you look back like this if I can just I don't know you might be able to see it now but if I get rid of some of this right when you look back at it give me two seconds you should be able to see just no weeds and just there we go that so you get the tiers that's what I want and then each tier is going to be a different plant so I could have say melons I could have uh, pumpkins I could have trees I could have bamboo so everything is going to have its own layer and I'm going to make these layers higher so I'm hoping that this particular this top layer is going to be see I've started here uh, it's going to be probably another one or two layers high so it'll probably be about the height of this glass panel here and then I'm going to keep on building them up and up and up and up but you can get this I know you, you can get the sense of the scale of it from being inside it but you can even get you know an even bigger sense I think of when you're looking outside and you can see that inside there are fully grown trees so yeah so that that's my plan this is what I'm currently doing and hopefully I can bring you an update to this video when it's all complete very very shortly so again I can't run so I'm going to change to my diamond sword and I'm going to make my way back to bunker there's a donkey there I'm going to have to make myself a saddle I think so I can start riding these animals because it would make a lot of sense a horse there this was another little mine that I was building mine transit system and it was a transit system I'm sure you've seen all this um, unevenness before until you've guessed it a creeper came along and decided that me working here was enough for him to blow up here uh, and then I decided well okay sod that for now got my little creeper traps here so catch them they get taken down here and then they can't get out <laughs> and then they might float down here I've blocked this off now but it was open because underneath my bunker I've got a huge pond that you would you would see notifications pop up um, where the uh, where the water flows and footsteps notifications are and it would say zombie converted to the drowned there we are that's it so they, they would all sit under there and just well perish basically and I don't know if I've shown you this I've got loads of hidden nooks and crannies everywhere I really enjoy it oh yes I think I did show you this last time but I'm going to show you again that's my railway my automated railway track and underneath there is a huge cave that I've made and what we used to have before I built up this area mobs used to fall in there and used to fall right in the cave uh, and then as I was building that automated line you could see them all trying to get me I don't know if they're still there if they've perished if they've teleported couldn't tell you but they were and there was a lot of them right folks I think that's it for today's video well that's the the biodome the white and the silver line I hope you've really enjoyed this as much as I have been explaining it and and hopefully this gives you a bit of inspiration for your Minecraft environments. Thanks ever so much for watching folks. Be sure to tune in to the next video coming tomorrow. Uh, thanks ever so much for watching. I've been JD. You've been fantastic as always. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hello and welcome to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying the channel. So until next time, my friends, happy gaming.